loving kindness practice. This is a very, this is actually the most powerful practice. It's top two, definitely. Some people will argue, some people say, no, it's self-inquiry. But if you include release as part of loving kindness, release loving kindness, that's very hot right now. So top two loving, top two meditations in the game, honestly. And listen, they, this is why the Buddha's here, uh, Metatron's here, the Pleiadians, they come watch because you think you're an adult. In our lives, our ego tells us we're adults, but truly we're just in grade three, apparently. It's just, we're on third D, they're going fourth D, fifth D. There's seven, there's all these higher dimensions anyway. So they're up there, they come to watch. We're like kindergarten students. We are in Kali Yuga, one of the most difficult and most egoic times to be alive, according to the Hindus, Kali Yuga. And so when they see people practicing loving kindness in Kali Yuga, they say, let me see them. And then when they see us, they say, oh, that's so cute. Just like if you saw a baby meditating. So adorable. My 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 buddy sent me a picture of his kid like this. And he's like, you're going to be so proud. And he sent him a picture. His kid was Lotus. So cute. So cute. But don't forget that that, that kid's like four, right? But then he has a two-year-old brother. After him, the two-year-old brother did it. And then the four-year-old goes, oh my God, that's so cute. So it's it, so don't think it ends on you. The five-year-old thinks the two-year-old's cute. It's silly. It's like, what are you? you? You almost want to say, what are you, stupid? You're cute. No, both are cute. That's correct what they're doing. The five-year-old thinks the two-year-old's cute. So just like that, the angels come, they come watch you. Yeah, no, and, and uh, there's nothing, um, you know, any kinds of uh, shames or guilt you have about your past, these are all mistakes. I don't know if anyone told you, but your ego is constantly trying to make you forget that. So that is a big part of the karma here today is to remind you of that, um, that you are loved because you are loved. And that's it. Those are the facts. Those are the facts of the matter. So my name is Amish Patel. Uh, I am an award-winning writer, Writers Guild Award winner. I don't, not for me, I don't tell you. No, I tell you for because then it, it keeps your ego at ease. The, that award, it lets you know that, hey, this guy probably knows something. As a spiritual teacher, certified, a spiritual teacher. I can't believe how many people, these law of attraction gurus, they're basically taking loving kindness and then adding a pyramid scheme onto it. It's ridiculous. Incredible, beautiful teachings. Yeah, I don't want to insult the big gurus, okay? I was just watching, my, my friend just put out a video. Uh, I, do a, I do a podcast about con artists actually uh, every Monday. And one of our one of the people that I work with in, the, in this community, he put out a video about Bob Proctor. Now I've always loved Bob Proctor. I love Bob Proctor. I love the prosperity that he talks about. But little do I know that after these banger meditate, he's performing these banger meditations and he, if you're trying to hawk some pyramid scheme, he comes right there. He goes, come on, the Tao is in you. Infinite abundance is in you. You can be anything. You can do anything. You can have anything. Now, who's going to buy the Neutralite system? $5,000 package. Who's going to get it? We got one right there. Show the Tao you mean business. Hey, show the Tao. Get him. Show the Tao you mean business. And then they're trying to sell some pyramid scheme on him. Now, now you now you buy 500 like you're selling vitamin pills you got 50 boxes of vitamin pills in your garage like they get you all riled up they take the loving kindness teaching go over there get them all riled up then when they're all riled up they try to sell them on a pyramid scheme it's ridiculous you know it's it's it, it, it's very sad it's very sad and then and then yeah like you two years later you're just sitting there with like 50 boxes of vitamin pills in the garage you're not friends with anyone ever anymore because anytime someone comes over, you're like, come on, man, don't you buy vitamins? We're really struggling here with this. Just buy one, come on, man. Here, I'll give you a free one, come on. Try it for the community because you're too deep in that, right? It's too bad and it really shows you how the ego can even get the spiritual community because they really are, even Pema Chodron, one of the great teachers, and I have to make a note to email her right after this meditation, one of the great teachers in the community, she put out an article last year saying that at the Shambhala Institute, a celibate Buddhist institute, Shambhala Institute, she put out an article talking about rampant sexual abuse, alcoholism. Alcoholism? Are you doing the teachings? You know, there's a system for getting out of all that. And it's from the Buddha. These guys are getting wasted at their, at their community teachings, which is fine if that's what you're selling yourself as. 
they sell themselves as a celibate organization that would never, you know. So it's interesting though, how the ego can get in there. Even Osho, I'm listening to a lot of Osho right now. Incredible, incredible teachings. I remember I was telling someone from India because Osho is from India and he made a whole city in America called Rajneesh Puram. And I'm telling my my cousin in India, or my, my he's like a family friend, but he's older than me, married for like 15 years. And they get married like it's their job to get married. Like it's his duty to get married. He got married, mom said, get married this person. They're just, they're actually in love in their own way too. They're happy, but whatever. But I was just telling the story about like, I'm watching this this uh, interview with this guy who joined Rajneesh Puram back in the day, back in the seventies, Osho's big commune. Big commune, made it a city official. But this guy's talking about, he's like, I, I, uh, I was in, I, I just graduated Harvard Law. Didn't believe in God, left the church when I was 12. And uh, I'm just driving across the country with my with, with my buddy, and he uh, he puts on this tape. This uh, he says you got to listen to the Rajneesh. You got to listen to the Bhagwan. He says, you got to listen to the Bhagwan. I said, hey, I, you know, I'll try anything. Put it on. I don't care. Twenty minutes later, I pulled over to the side of the uh, road without a payphone. I called my wife. I said, honey, we're getting a divorce. The Bhagwan needs me. Honey, honey, it's it's nectar in my ears. The Bhagwan needs me. So, that's it. And I'm giving him all our money. He gives the, he takes all the money. <laughs> that's the thing, right? Like that's the problem with the ego. It comes in, it's very powerful. And that's what meditation does. But this is how powerful the ego is. Is that even these gurus, they got the teachings. Uh, it's just so many of them. Just end up being con artists. I mean, this Rajneesh Purim, I get it. When you watch Wild Wild Country, the documentary on YouTube, or on, on Netflix, great documentary. I get it. And I know a lot of white people, they're here for Rajneesh, they're here for Osho. And they're like, Amish, the townspeople were racist. They attacked him. He had to fight back. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Fight back with loving kindness. These guys got guns. They poisoned the town. You can't poison the town, right? We have to draw a line here. I don't mind you have 50 Rolls Royces. I don't mind they're in a lineup and he just, they he, when he drives by, they're all, and all white. So you know, the people are gonna get mad. The locals are gonna be like, what the hell's going on here? They're pissed. And these videos are coming out of them doing weird stuff too. Apparently rampant STDs. It's fine. That's not, we're not here to make judgments on all of that even. I don't care. But um, I did want to honor someone who, a great, incredible teacher actually that who passed away this week, Thich Nhat Hanh. I was so upset. I was like, you know, when I started, when I started to meditate this meditation and when I, when I got into this, I really thought I'd meet people like him and, um, and he passed away. And that's why I was saying, I got to send an email to Pema Chodron about this because uh, you know, you just never know. And uh, Thich Nhat Hanh was one of these incredible teachers. This is what you get with Thich Nhat Hanh. This is the difference, right? And, and this is gonna relate to our teaching that we need to know for the meditation. And the moral of the story is, you are loved because you are loved. Such is the nature of love and kindness. Okay? So now that I've done my karmas, make sure you do your karmas, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and sign up for meditation. Ascension is upon us, foolish. Sign up for meditation immediately. Ha! Am I still here? F